searching for the things this world has rejected. The things that are broken, that are flawed, thrown away and discarded. I seek the lost, the damaged, the forgotten things, the overlooked and the neglected. The things that have been pushed aside and left behind. Why? Why do I do this? Why chase after that which is despised by so many? It is because I have chosen the rejected. I bring restoration to the broken. I see beyond the flaws and the imperfections and I bring new life to the lost. This world has called them useless and garbage, hopeless and unwanted. They have been scarred, abused, ignored and unloved, but I, I have reclaimed them and they belong to me now. They are my masterpiece, and I have a plan and a future for every single one. For I am crafting these dissonant and discarded pieces into something beautiful. That's good stuff, isn't it? I'm going to be reading tonight out of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, beginning there. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Therefore, remember that formerly, you who are Gentiles by birth, and called uncircumcised, by those who call themselves the circumcision, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, Excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant, covenants of the promise, without hope, without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Folks, there was a problem. There were two groups disconnected from one another, both desiring the same thing, yet worlds apart. One called Jew, the other called Gentile. Both God's chosen ones both longing to belong to God's kingdom, to be called the children of the Most High. You see, there was a problem. But the problem gave way to something beautiful. Something beautiful, we hear the words of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 19, in all of this. We hear, peace, peace to him who is far and to him who is near, and I will heal him. Through this problem, we can hear the echoes of Micah, chapter 5, verse 5, saying, This one 
will be our peace. And then fulfilled through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross at Calvary, we can hear Paul writing the words, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the fullness of grace. Guys, before Christ there were these two groups. One of them, verse 19 tells us, were known as the fellow citizens. They were the Jews. And then there was this other group, the Gentiles. They were known as the foreigners or the sojourners. Now this outside group, this Gentile group, they were secure in the land at the time because they were paying a tax. The problem is, is that they had no rights. They couldn't receive the full benefit of being a part and belonging. But then, following the coming of Christ, following Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, everybody, they all, the two groups, they all enjoy the privileges of God's new people because they all belong. Something we have to be mindful of is that Christ and no other has solved the problem. He solved the problem of our relationships with God and our problem with our relationships with man. He draws us, he draws men to God, and Jesus draws men to one another, women to one another. Christ is both peace and peacemaker. On the cross, Jesus made Jew and Gentile one. This is a huge deal because together they would be known as Christian. And then we find verse 20 where we can see that their foundation becomes firm. Verse 22, we see that they're being built together with Jesus as the cornerstone. And guys, we're going to talk about how this impacts us here in just a few minutes, but I'm hoping that we can take the next few minutes and we can just say thank you. We can just cry out to God and say thank you for what you did by sending Jesus. Because as we all sit here tonight, is there anybody sitting in the room that by bloodline you are of Jewish cultural descent? Anybody that you know of, right? Anybody? That means everybody sitting in this room is a Gentile. You are a Gentile, which means without Jesus, you don't have relationship with God. But because of Jesus, we can have direct relationship with God the Father. Can we just take just a few moments and let's just say thank you to him? Can we do that? Let's stand to our feet and let's just say thank you to God for that. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure could help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. somebody that's like in your group or whatever you're supposed to yell and scream really loud right that's what, yeah, anyway that's appreciate you guys who did well done well well done um man it's good to be together tonight it's good to hang out it's good to work on this thing we're talking about tonight called belong and so we want to work through ephesians chapter 2 a little bit more uh, we've, we've already read, we've gone through the kind of the, the biblical understanding of what we're going to talk through. But the, the question we have to ask ourselves tonight is, what does Ephesians 2 mean for us? I know a while ago we talked about the fact that we are all what is classified as Gentiles. And so we would be Gentile Christians. And so there's obviously the inherent bonus there, obviously the foundation of who we are. But 
It means even more for us, this passage, than, than that foundation alone. Because you see, we've got a problem today ourselves. Much like early on, we have a problem. There's two groups. They're disconnected from one another. Both desiring the same thing. Yet worlds apart. One, a part of a legacy group. The other, attending church on Sunday night. Alone. Both are God's chosen ones. Both longing to belong. You see, there's a problem, but the problem gives way to something really beautiful tonight. John chapter 10, verse 10 says that Jesus came so that we might have life. And not just any life, but that we would have life to the fullest measure. And what this means is that Jesus came so that we would have a life that is inspired by God. It is inspired by the goodness of God, regardless of whatever our circumstances are. No matter what's going on, whether things are good or things are bad or things are in between or whatever it is, there is a life that can be full of the goodness of God. And that's why Jesus came. And so tonight I want to propose that we know that Jesus came so that we would have life to the fullest measure. We also know that one of the top ten needs of every person on the planet is to know that they are accepted. It's one of the top ten. To know that you are accepted. To know that I, are accept I am accepted. So in other words, we want to know that we belong. We want to know that we're a part. And so here's my hypothesis for tonight, right? When we are belonging to a community of believers, we're more prone to experience life that is full regardless of our circumstances. Now, it's not much of a hypothesis because we actually have scientific data behind this knowing that what I just said is exactly right. That when we are a part of a community of believers, we have a greater chance of living life to the fullest just the way that Jesus came in order to give to us. National Geographic um, did a study all over the world, and the study was wanting to find out what the pockets of the world are that have the longest living adults in all of the world. And they wanted to go there and to find out why they are the longest living on the face of the planet. Why is it that there are people who are working well into their 90s, they're living well beyond 100? What is it that is special about these communities all over the world? Well, some of you guys may know about the community called Loma Linda, California. It's right here in America. And it's got what is the longest living population in all of America, one of the longest living communities in all of the world. And so they went there and they went to study, why is this? What is it that is so special about this group of people that they are able to live the length of time that they're living? They're able to work the length of time that they're working and life being the way that it is. Well, the first thing is no mystery. It's diet. The first thing that they discovered from this community in California, I just like saying Loma Linda. Isn't that fun to say? Loma Linda, California. I mean, wouldn't you want to live there? Anyway, diet was one of the, one of the things that was, was a, a contributing factor. No, no surprise there. Their diet, those of you who are curious, I know you health nuts in the room are curious to know what their diet is. They eat a low glycemic diet, which means low sugar, and they also are vegetarians. I know, I know. We live in Texas. Whoa. Everybody's like, what do I say? Okay, I can cut down on sugar, but beef? I don't know. Anyway, so, so, so low glycemic and vegetarian. Second one, no surprise, exercise. They believe the physics are exactly right, that a body in motion stays in motion. And so therefore, they're going to continue to, to exercise. They're very, very um, devoted to this exercise. And also, they're eating lifestyle. In fact, so de devoted to this that when you go to their grocery store, there's no meat section in it at all. There you go. Interesting. But here's the one that I wanted to get to. You guys know where I'm going. The place that I wanted to get to, though, was this other contributing factor of why they are living as long as they are living. And this is something that is all over the world. The reason these communities are living the length of time that they are living is because diet, exercise, and a sense of community. It's this understanding that they're a part, that they belong, they are in relationship. There is something really, really important. Now, beyond that, the one in Loma Linda is extra special. Uh, 
because in this, they showed that less than 5% of this area of California were not involved in a religious activity. Now what that means is 95% of this community go to church. 95%, that's pretty remarkable, pretty amazing. They are the largest collective group of Seventh-day Adventists in America. There are Christian brothers and sisters, for those of you who are wondering if it's like a Saturday cult or something. No, they love Jesus. And uh, there are Christian brothers and sisters. And so some would say, living this length of time and living in this kind of a community, this might be called life to the fullest. And so we know that there's scientific data in the fact that when we belong to a community, and even especially a community of believers, we are more prone to experience life that is full regardless of our circumstances. That there is joy even when things are bad. That there is truth, there is hope, there is peace even when things aren't quite right and also when things are. Last week we introduced the kind of foundational need of these top ten needs of everybody on the planet and that is security. We talked about the fact that everybody on the planet needs to know that everything's going to be okay. We have this deep rooted need inside, deep in us. We need to know that everything is going to be okay. And the thing is, is that you can sit here on a Sunday night and you can be a part of worship and man, it can be so sweet. It can be so amazing. And you can, you can know that God the Father loves you unconditionally. He is always with you. He is right there no matter what. And Jesus Christ is the way in order to be able to live that life that, that God created you to live. You can receive that and you can have security in the fact that when your earthly tent of a body dies, you will live eternally in relationship with God the Father forever. And we can have that security. But we know there's 10 needs that we all have. So we need to have that security. But even beyond that, we need a little bit more. We're kind of like this little girl who late at night was scared. And so she called her mama into the room, or she called her daddy into the room, and he came in and he did great. He sat down next to her and he said, I'm so sad that you're scared tonight. I want you to know that we're here in the house with you. I want you to know that that Jesus is with you. You are never alone. He did a great job giving care to his girl. He spent time praying for her. And then he, and then he said, okay, well, I'm going to walk out. And you go, you get some rest. And so he walks out and he leaves her in the room. And a few minutes later, she calls for mama. Mama goes in the room. She does even better than dad did. And she was channeling every emotional tactic she knew to connect with her girl, to help her know that she was safe, that she was secure, that she was going to be well cared for, that she had nothing to worry about. They prayed together, and then the mama left the room. A few minutes later, the girl calls for both mom and dad. She needed both barrels. She calls for mom and dad. Mom and dad come into the room, and they are just off of each other. I mean, like ping pong in a really good way. They are caring for their girl. They are helping her know that, that she's not alone. And they're right there. They're right there with her. And she just says, I just want one of you guys to stay with me. I want you to stay with me in here. And this is, no, we're not going to be able to stay with you in here. But just remember that Jesus is always with you. God is always with you. And she turns and she looks at both of them and she says, but I want Jesus with skin on. <laughs> Guys, we all need Jesus with skin on, don't we? Every single one of us in this room are like that little girl in a manly way. <laughs> we need Jesus with skin on. We need the tangible evidence that we are not insane. We need the tangible evidence that we are not alone living this life following Jesus. We've got to have this legacy. We call this sharing life together. We call this legacy group. We call this living together. If we want to live life to the fullest, we all need a sense of community. We all need to be able to go where everybody knows our name. It's a great theme song. You guys were singing it as we were going along earlier tonight, I know. We, want to, we need to go somewhere that whenever we're around people, the folks are always glad we came. They're always glad that we're there. And the reason is, is because in addition to security, we also need to know that we're accepted. We need to know that everything's going to be okay, and we need to know that we're accepted. 
We need to be received willingly and unconditionally, even when our behavior has been imperfect. To be received willingly and unconditionally, even when our behavior has been imperfect. We know God the Father feels this way about us. We know that. We also need to know that Jesus, the skin off, is right there too. We need to be able to belong. That's why Genesis 2.18, early on in creation, it says, It is not good for man to be alone. Hebrews 10.24 says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. All the more as you see the day that Jesus Christ is going to return approaching. That's why in Acts chapter 2, we, we know that the early church, following Jesus, bringing these two groups together as one, known as Christian, they met together daily in the temple courts. Because they needed that tangible expression that God the Father was with them. Not just in words, but present. Guys, the mechanism we have with this church, this expression of the body of Christ, the mechanism we have to experience and to accomplish this belonging, we call them legacy groups. And legacy groups are where you move from being a face in the crowd to where everybody knows your name. And if this sounds like a pitch right now, it's very clearly a pitch. <laughs> Unashamedly a pitch. This is, we want you to move from just being a face in this crowd to be, from being anonymous here to where every single person knows your name and they know your story and they're with you and they're all those things that Heather was saying. We want you to know these things. We want you to experience Jesus with skin on because if you're just experiencing the love from God the Father and you're not allowing that horizontal relationship, you're missing out. You're missing out on the fullness of life that Jesus came to give you. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stretch here for just a second. You guys hang with me. I'm going to stretch for just a second. Because in Ephesians 2, verse 19, it talks about the Jewish community and it talks about the Gentile community. And we've already talked about the fact that, that, that both long for a relationship with God the Father and through Jesus, both became Christian. The two became one group. I'd like to compare... That if you guys are a part of a legacy group, let's put you in the Jewish category. If you're not a part of a legacy group, we're going to put you in the Gentile category. And the reality is we know God is in relationship with all. He is longing for relationship with everyone. He loves us unconditionally and He is here with us always. But Jesus came so that things changed. And I want to propose tonight that if you're in that Gentile category or if you're in that outside category and you're not sensing this belonging because you're not in community with the body of Christ, I hope that you're going to choose to move from the outside to the inside. I hope you choose to let us care for you the way that God longs for you to be cared for. I hope that you let us do this. Now, it's going to be kind of like this, okay? I'm going to need about 12 to 15 volunteers. All right, not all kids. Come on, adults. I'm going to go majority adults, like eight adults, some kids. Come on, Lisa. Come on, Josh. Come on, Molly. You're about the size of a child, though. But anyway, so Josh, Josh compensates for you. That's right. Okay, come on up here and stand on the carpet. Come on, other adults. You don't. It's not a trust fall, so he's going to be okay, everybody. All right, don't worry. Yeah, come on, Joel. Come on, come on, Brian. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Who do I have left? Ren, come on. Yeah, come on, Sandra. What do I have now? Three, four, five, six, seven. Because I love you, but I don't trust you. No, it's okay. No, just kidding. Okay. All right. We'll move the kids. Everybody jump up on the on the on the carpet there. Excellent. That's great. Okay. Most of girls, come on up, my man. Come on, Blair. Come on, Raiden. Let's see what we got. Come on, pack on up there. 
Come on over here, Mommy. Tristan, I'm sorry. Right over here, buddy. I called you Braden, didn't I? Sorry. Okay. I think that's probably going to do. Okay, so... You guys, my family and I, we've been watching some, some Disney movies lately. And so um, last week we watched Aladdin. So, so you guys, tonight we're going we're gonna to go on a magic carpet ride. I dig, I dig it, you know. I, I, so tonight we're on a magic carpet ride. While we're standing here on this magic carpet, um, you guys can't imagine this, but the reality is this magic carpet has already taken off. And it's 100 feet in the air. Can you feel it? You're like looking down on all the ants known as humanity. You can see that the highway is going, and well, maybe more than 100 feet would require that. But anyway, um, but you can see all of all of us in this building, and you know that if you step off the magic carpet right now, you're going to die because you're going to plummet to the earth and hit your head. And we hope you love Jesus. <laughs> and so the magic carpet is way up in the air, and so it's going to be very important that you don't get off the carpet. Well, much like Aladdin discovered, a magic carpet is not the easiest thing. To fly. And so you need some instructions, right? You need some instructions for the magic carpet. And so the problem is, is that I'm looking at this magic carpet right now and I'm noticing that there's a label down there, which means this magic carpet is upside down. And that means that the instructions on how to fly this magic carpet are underneath it. And so without stepping off the magic carpet, we need you to flip that magic carpet over. So you're going to have to work together, talk it out, work it out, and you guys, we're going to put on some groovy tunes in the background, and we're going to, we're going to make it to where, as you guys flip this magic carpet over, working together, then you'll be able to read the instructions. All right? You guys think they can do it? Absolutely, they can do it. Okay. So you guys, on the count of three, we're going to get started. Okay? Nobody comes off the magic carpet, otherwise you die. All right, here we go. And go.
Yes. Are they even close? I can't. I'm not that tall. Ah, they're getting smart. <laughs> Is that Jesus freak? JC Talk. You guys, we're going to give you about another minute and a half. We're so close. So close, guys. You really are. They're almost. They gotta flip it. They're all thin ones. They can't. They gotta like roll it in their feet. Too much in the middle. Almost there. They're gonna get it. They're gonna get it. Keep talking, keep talking, y'all are close. There you go. Cheer them on a little bit, help them out. They're gonna get it. They're almost there. Keep trucking, we're gonna give you 30 more seconds. Come on. That's right, that's right, Lord, that's right. Oh man, you're super close right there. Feel the burn, huh? Oh man, I don't want to stop it because I want you guys to finish.
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, time out. You can do it. Everybody close your eyes. They can do it. Totally. <laughs> All right. Everybody give them a hand. Very, very good. <laughs> there aren't any instructions on that side of that magic carpet. Hey, it's okay. There may not be instructions, like literal instructions. <laughs> but here's the deal. You guys, you guys just got to embody what Legacy Group is all about. And it's not the fact that we're all failures, even though we are. That is not the truth we're going for. The reality is here, is that just like these folks here on the Magic Carpet Ride are working things out, there is a shared experience going on. And as that shared experience takes place, there's relationship that's being built. There's, there's, these folks are gonna get to be able to talk about this Magic Carpet Ride for a while, aren't they? They're gonna talk about the night that it didn't work. They're gonna talk about all kinds of things. But here's the deal. All the people in this ride is the ride of life. And we know that this carpet Although we said that the instructions were on the other side, we know that this carpet is Jesus. And we know that whenever we share life together, we have shared experiences with Jesus as our foundation, we know that life to the fullest is possible. We know that it can happen. And in fact, it's likely to happen. We know that. We, get, we are accepted. We know that we can belong. We have to choose, though. We have to choose whether we're going to be a part of that or not. And so... When you think of fellow citizens, you think of the Jews, you think of the Gentiles or sojourners. We think that we know that Jesus came so that we can have life the way that God intended it for, to be. And so here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, if you are here and you are only attending church, if you are a church attender, just like the Gentiles were a part of living on the land, they were not being able to experience or receive the full benefit of being a part of the body. The same thing is true. You can come on a Sunday night and you can benefit from Sunday night. No question about it. But make no mistake, you're not experiencing the fullness of what church is. You're not experiencing the fullness of what God intended when He created us relationally. And when you transition from being a church attender on a Sunday night to being a part of a legacy group, then what will happen is you can receive the full benefit of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. Because in that moment, you belong. You belong to something bigger. Because we know it to be the truth. We know that it's the truth. That if people are a part of legacy groups, we know that you're all in. That's the, it's the litmus test. I mean, whenever it comes to legacy church, we know that people who are a part of legacy groups, they are the ones who are going to lay their lives down for this church. They're the ones who are going to go over and above for one another because we get relationship. We get what it means to belong. And so it's not the fact that you can't know Jesus or your eternity can't be secure. Because it is. No doubt about it. Make no mistake about it. But I think that God longs for more in your life than just attending church. He longs for you to know in a tangible way that you belong to the body. That you are a part of the body. And just like we see in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, that's the beginning of your foundation becoming firm. It's the beginning of no matter what life looks like, there can be joy. It's the beginning of you know that when things go haywire, it's going to be okay. Because you know there's a group of people that are going to surround you and are going to care for you. And then in verse 22, we see that being built together, we become stronger. We, we have the, the privilege 
of being received willfully and unconditionally, even when our behavior has been imperfect. And guys, that right there is what's called life to the fullest, regardless of our circumstances. But here's the deal. You can do exactly what I'm saying tonight. The band's going to come on back up. They're going to sing this thing. You can do exactly what I'm saying tonight. You can move from being a church attender to being a part of a legacy group. And if Jesus Christ is not the foundation of your life, then what's going to end up happening is legacy group is going to fall short for you. And you're going to come to me and you're going to say, Danny, you're full of it because you said this and that's not what I've been experiencing. Nine times out of ten, whenever I get told that, it's because people are expecting the legacy group people to be Jesus. And that's not our job. Jesus is to be Jesus in our lives. And we get the privilege of allowing Jesus to flow through us to one another in relationship. But if you're hoping that people are going to supply all of your needs according to Christ's riches, it's not going to happen. If you're hoping that people are going to be your savior, it's not going to work. But if you are willing to say yes to Jesus and let him be your foundation to this ride of life, then when you become a part of a legacy group, you realize that you belong to something that is huge, something that is beautiful and something that is really robust and really strong. And you realize it's not the people that you're counting on to be Jesus. You realize it's Christ in them it's the reassurance that Jesus is near. It's the reassurance that you can lay your head down at night and know you're a phone call away from somebody being there. And it's the tangible expression of Jesus Christ. And so my question to you tonight is, do you know Jesus as your foundation? Because without that, all of this is nothing. This is just a sales pitch for why you need to join the church club. And we are not about the church club. But we long for you to belong. And God longs for you to belong to his bride. And he longs for you to lay your life down for other people and to care for them the way that he has for us. And as we receive his forgiveness, we get to offer forgiveness. And we receive his grace, we get to offer grace and mercy and everything. We get to do those things. And it is a blessing and a privilege to get to do that. But if you don't know Jesus, then all of those things are going to fall short because it's just an act. And so the first question tonight is, do you know Jesus as your foundation? Is there anybody here that's sitting here tonight that's saying, you know what? I don't know Jesus as my foundation. I long for Jesus to be the Lord of my life. And I want to know that my needs, first of all, are going to be met by Him. And then from there, I get the privilege of the tangible blessing of His love in my life for people. Is there anybody here tonight that says, man, that's me. I want that. I want to be a part of this body. I want to be a part of, of what it means to be a believer. And, and Jesus came to bring everybody together so that we can be one under his lordship. Anybody? Then I'm going to assume that what that means is, is that if you're sitting here tonight, you fall in one of two groups. You fall in, number one, the group that says, I'm still kicking the tires of what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a Christ follower. That's cool. Keep kicking those tires. Keep asking questions. Keep searching the truth, please. Or you are a part of the next group, which means your eternity is secure because you follow Jesus. And so my question to you tonight, if you're a part of that group that says, I've accepted Jesus, do you belong to a legacy group where everybody knows your name? Do you belong? Are you known? Are you receiving the fullness of the security and the acceptance needs that we all have? Or are you here tonight and you're only receiving partial benefit of what it means to be a part of the bride of Christ known as the church. On your seats, there's some cards that have a little yellow sticky note on there that say belong. If you are a part and you're still on the outside and you've yet to say, man, I'm going to get all in on this mission. 
I'm going to be a part. I want to belong. And you get to do that. Take a moment and look over that card. Pull the belong sticker off. Take a look at that card and find some of those really pretty faces. Find some of those really pretty faces. Call somebody. Look at when the groups meet and say, man, I want to belong. I want to go to the next level of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. I want to experience life to the fullest where you tell me about your group. And then I hope that you'll take an opportunity to go and kick the tires of some groups. Figure out what it means to go all in, to what it means to be grounded in Christ, and to know what it means to be supported by Christ through all of us. Lord, I thank you for tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you help us. Help us, Lord, to know that there is a reward for following you. Lord, there is a reality that is so much bigger than we are, it's not even funny. And Lord, I pray that you help us to experience this fullness, this beautiful life that you sent your son to die on a cross so that we can experience. Lord, let us not fall short on this earth by just being a part of the club. But Lord, let us be in community. Let us belong. Let us live this life that no matter what our circumstances are, there's a fullness, there's a joy and a peace and a patience. Lord, there's kindness and generosity and there's all of these things that can still exist in us even when we're weak. But Lord, we need the encouragement of Jesus with skin. So Lord, I pray, help us to belong help us to live life to the fullest the way you intended. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.